الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين. I will praise you to Allah and may peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. First of all, uh, I am honored to come to the brothers and to address them regarding a very important topic and it was at the request of our brother, Zahullah Khairan, he wants to talk about this war that the people are belittling it and they don't know how big is this war so we're going to try to shed light upon this war and it's very important in this time and era to talk about how can we discipline ourselves and how can we straighten up upon the straight path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us to say it 17 times a day Allah azza wa jal he says in surah Fatir verse number six إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوَّ You, you believe that this shaitan is for you is an enemy. So take him as an enemy. إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ Verily he calls his followers to be the dwellers of hellfire. Now, this enemy is a permanent enemy. He will not let go of his weapons. So do not belittle his enmity and never think about having truce with him. So you never think that I might sort of come to half solutions with this shaitan. And verily, we need to make sure that we have to be prepared to fight him. So how can we fight this enemy? Do we, for example, worship him for the sake of that he will not punish us, or he will not fight us, like the Yazidiyun had done, the devil worshippers, I don't know, have heard about them, they are in Iraq and other places as well. And when they were asked, why do you worship the shaitan, they know the shaitan is not their god, they said, because we are afraid of him, and that's why we worship him. Are we going to do the same thing? It's actually in the same verse that we have recited at the beginning, فَاتَّخِذُهُ adua. Take the shaitan as an enemy. So if you don't take the shaitan as an enemy, then you are a follower of the shaitan. If you do not take the shaitan as an enemy, you are from those who support the shaitan. So it is a war, and it is a continuous war, a non-stopping war, and it is outside and inside. It's outward and inward. It's in the open and it's hidden. And it had started from the moment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created Adam alayhi salam. When Allah created Adam, and he created him on his form, 60 yards, that is 30 meters in length. And before he blew the soul into him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he had, of course, created Adam with his own hands, the Allah, the Almighty. Iblis, who has been created before him, the jinn were created already before mankind. So Iblis came and he started rotating around this uh, creature that is Adam alayhi salam, which is moveless, he can't move, there's no sign of living in it, no life. And he started kicking him with his foot. Qal, and he made this oath, and this oath stays until today. By Allah, verily, if I have the power over you, I will destroy you. And verily, if you have any power over me, I will disobey you. So that's an oath by Iblis, may Allah curse him, from the moment that Allah Azza wa Jal had created Adam alayhi salam, and he asked the angels to prostrate to him. Iblis was asked to prostrate along, he is not from the angels, but he was trying to imitate the angels. He was a righteous person, but then he did not like the idea of prostrating to someone whom he thinks is being made of something which is less important than him. He was made of the fire, whereas Adam was made of the clay. He didn't like it. And the arrogance was into him. And that is why he had made this oath. That is, he will never ever obey us, he will make us disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. So his task is basically to chuck everybody in the hellfire. And that is the poking that takes place to every child, save Isa alayhi salam and his mother. 
for verily the Prophet ﷺ, as mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, كل بني آدم يطعن الشيطان بأصبعه في جنبه أو في جنبه. Every son of the son of Adam, the shaitan will come and poke him into his sides. Uh, that is the moment when he is born. إلا عيسى وأمه مريم. That is except for Isa and his mother Maryam. فذهب يطعن فطعن في الحجاب. He wanted to poke, but verily he poked into the shield. And that shield was given to Mary and her mother because of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us about his mother when she said the mother and that is the grandmother of Isa, the mother of Maryam. فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا When she gave birth of Maryam, قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْثَ Lord, I have given birth to a female. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ Allah knows what type of child she has given birth to, whether it's male or female. وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَ And I know for a fact that the male is not like the female because the male at that time used to be serving the monastery, the place of worship, is not like the female. So she'd given birth to a female, but she wanted a male for the sake of serving the monastery. So, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَ وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمَ And I called her Maryam. وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And verily I seek for her and for her offspring. And the only offspring of her is Isa alayhi salam. That is from the cursed shaitan. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had put a shield when Mary was born, Maryam. And when her child Isa was born, there was a shield and the shaitan, he wanted to fulfill his oath. Whom Allah has given him the permission to fulfill his oath when he wanted to be sent down. So he said, oh Allah, just give me a respite until the day of resurrection. And he given him respite and he said, oh Allah, any person who is there, I will deviate him except illa ibadak al mukhlasin, except those sincere devoters and devotees. Those are the ones I'm not able to mislead them. So the shaitan, he had declared the war, and we have to declare the war back. And as I said, the story behind it, it comes back in Surah Al Araf. Allah Azza wa Jal talks about the creation of Adam and he was created from a sand clay and the shaitan he did not want to press prostrate when he was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the angels to prostrate the Iblis did not want to prostrate he said oh Lord you have created him from mud and you've created me from the fire so according to the analogy and deduction, laws by deduction, he thought Iblis, may Allah curse him, he is better. He's made from better, you know, clay, from better sort of material, that is the fire. And actually, if I want to discuss the analogy of Iblis, Iblis, he made the wrong analogy, even as that is analogy. But Allah is commanding you, so you put the analogy on one side and you adhere to the command of Allah, prostrate. But he said, no, 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 the fire is better. But if I look into it myself, I would say the mud is better because the fire is the source of destruction, whereas the mud, the source of what? Living. It makes something living out of it. So according to the analogy of Iblis, even he's wrong in that. But there is no analogy when there is Allah Azza wa commanding you to do because Allah is the creator and he knows what is better and what is good and you don't discuss his command. And that's why he was expelled from paradise because of his arrogance. Now this reminds me of a story between a, 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 a teacher and a student. And the student is a secularist, or the teacher, he is a religious. So the student, he is now challenging his teacher. He's saying, you believe that Allah existing? He says, yes, and then prove it. Show me, where is Allah? And then he said to him, you believe that Al-Qadha wal Qadr, that everything is being set in destins. And I don't believe that. He said, yes, but he said, I'll believe that there is no fate. It's what you do. Then he said to him, I you believe as well that Shaitan, as well has been is going to be tortured how can shaitan if he's been made from the fire to be tortured in the fire do you understand the question so according to this secular students whom he thinks is smart but he was not as smart as the teacher because the teacher what he did he smacked him on his face <laughs> so the student he said oh you've given up already you smacked me that's your answer he said no that's my answer for your three questions as for question number one where is allah show me okay what did you feel when I smacked you? He said, pain. He said, show me where the pain is. What is the pain? Where is it? So, the pain itself. So, that's number one. 
Right, did you dream I'm gonna hit you? He said, no. Did you think I'm gonna hit you? He said, no. This is qada' wal qadar, decree as well. <laughs> what is my hand is made of? And what is your face is made of? It's the same material. Yet you have felt the pain. So shaitan as well will feel the pain, even he's made of the fire. So he had convinced him. Now, this is, as I said, an analogy which is <laughs> not right. We say that we adhere to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said when He did not prostrate, قَالَ فَهْبِطْ مِنْهَا فَهْبِطْ مِنْهَا Go back, go down from paradise. فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Get out because you are from the disgraced. So He went down. And that is why we start with the war, which is the title of this topic. The war. And if we go back to the military experience regarding the war, if we ask a commander in the war, he will tell you that if the enemy is close, that means he has the element of surprise. And the enemy is very close. Shaitan is very close. So he's got the element of surprise and that is why the other side, which is us, has to be on alert all the time. We need to be on permanent alert. We are ready for this enemy. And he should not be oblivious and he should not, you know, commit to, be, to, to defeat. He's all the time he's saying, I'm going to defeat the shaitan. Otherwise, he will be defeated and he will be overpowered. And that's why you find people are following the shaitan in terms of following the whims and desire. And others totally possessed Muslims, yet they can't control themselves. Recently, I've seen one, only yesterday on a lecture. I'm not going to mention the masjid, but I was delivering a lecture and subhanAllah, this person from nowhere, he started uh, saying bad words. Iffy, iffy, a'udhu billah, in the masjid. Now the brothers are trying to calm them down. So after the lecture, I said, brothers, well, I'm sorry. Lecture and entertainment as well at the same time. <laughs> but this is from possession of the shaitan. That person was totally out of his mind. He doesn't know what he's doing. Basically, that the expertise they would say to you as well, that if the target is very precious and very dear, then you'll find that the battle is fierce, is violent. And of course, the target is precious. The target is your salvation, paradise. Because of that, then the battle is very fierce, very violent and very brutal. And they told you the expertise as well, the longer that the fight is, that means the expert or the expertise of the enemies will be more. Because if you have longer war, and this war started from Adam alayhi salam. So definitely Iblis is more experienced than you are. Iblis did not die. Yet he's been from there until today and he's not dying. And that is why he is more expertise than you are, more experienced. And that is why the enemy as well had made an oath to Allah. He will not be in despair of chucking you, diverting you from the right path. And that is why we would say that he is strong. But he is strong and you are weak. But you could get another strength, you make yourself stronger. And where do you get that? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a story that a father taught to his son while one day he was walking and there's a dog barking. So the son straight away, as a natural act, he picked up a stone and he threw it towards the dog. So the dog went quiet for a minute and then I started again barking again. So he picked up another stone and he threw it and pelted it towards the dog. The dog went quiet for a bit. So the father said to him, Ryan, okay, he's going to stop. What about if you're going to throw him again? I'm going to bark again. I'm going to throw him again. What about it? So the son realized his father, he wants to teach him something. He said, then father, what should I do? He said, oh, owner of a dog, take your dog away. End of story. So who created the shaitan? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I say, oh Allah, the creator of the shaitan, take the shaitan away. So I'm going to keep throwing stones at him and swearing at him. It's not going to work. He loves it. The more you swear at him, the more he likes it. You have to curse him by the curse of Allah. Al'anuka bi la'natillah. La'anahu Allah. As in Surah An-Nisa. La'anahu Allah. Allah had cursed him by his curse. If you curse him like this, with a word, damn you, for example, shaitan will be happy. He will be even large. As one of the companions, one day, he was in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, mounting an animal and the animal tripled and he said Ta'isat, he just like, disgraced to you and so the Prophet he said verily you made the shaitan enlarged like an animal like an elephant big huge or well, you just said A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim and the shaitan goes so small so I would say to you that you need to understand 
your enemy properly in order to defeat him. If you don't understand him properly, then you will not be able to defeat him. So what is the nature of this enemy? What is he? How does he sleep? Because I want to know. You know, the enemy, they will gather intelligence about you, isn't it? I need to gather intelligence about the enemy. And how can I get my intelligence? I'm going to go and employ someone and go and, you know, go and search for Iblis, please. Collect as many information as you can. No! Because, you see, this enemy has more power in terms of that he could see me and I can't see him. So he could see me and I can't see him. يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُ He and his family, his offsprings, they could see where they can't see him. You can't see them. So it's, 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 it, 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 I need help. I need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what type of enemy it is? I need to gather this intelligence only from the source of Quran and the source of the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Iblis is the enemy number one for Ahl Sunnah. Unfortunately for those who are, inshallah, I'll call them our brothers from the Shia, inshallah, we stretch our arms to them to come back. But unfortunately, uh, what is the number one enemy for the Shia? According to what they say, Abu Bakr, no, Umar, then Abu Bakr, uh, then Iblis, then they call it America and Israel, whatever. <laughs> so number one, Umar, that's the enemy. For us, enemy number one is Iblis. And nobody else. Iblis is number one for Ahl Sunnah. Who is Iblis? He is the head of the Shayateen. And he is not their origin like Adam and the origin of mankind. Do you understand that? So the jinn did not come out from Iblis. But we came out from Adam. We are the sons of Adam. And the Shayateen, they are the followers of this Iblis. So Iblis, he is the head of the Shayateen. Now what is the word Shaytan? Shaytan is the disbeliever from the jinn. So he is part of the jinn. So the jinn is the biggest sort of species. That is the jinn whom Allah created. Min al jinnati wa nas, mankind and jinn. Those are the ones who has responsibility upon their shoulder. Those are the ones who have been asked to fulfill the obligation and keep away from the prohibited acts. And those are the ones who are going to be questioned on the day of resurrection. Jinn and mankind. From those jinns, those called shayateen. Shatana means he's been expelled from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these shayateen are being led by this Iblis. May Allah curse him. So shaytan, they say bi'run shateen, janin, majnoon. All of that for the word shaytan. And now, what is this shaitan made of? As we have said, they are made of from the mirror of the fire, just like the human being is made of from the sand clay, just like the angels are made from the light. Now, Allah Ta'ala A'lam, that means if they're made of the fire, it doesn't mean that they are fire. That means they're made of the fire. And these shayateen, they do just like we do as well. They weep. And that's how to make the shaitan weep. Prophet Sallallahu he said, if the son of Adam had prostrated when he hears, when he hears the recitation of a, of a ayah, a, a verse which contains uh, sujood lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fasjudu, so he makes sujood, so the shaitan will set aside and he will start crying. He said, the son of Adam uh, had been commanded to prostrate and he prostrated, woe to me, I've been commanded to prostrate and he did not prostrate. So you make him cry. So every time you prostrate to Allah, you make the shaitan cry. So they cry and they are actually they are soul, nafs, they are nafs. So they are nafs, so they need to breathe and everything. So, and also they are species that die. Iblis will not die because Allah gave him that respite, but they will die. Iblis will die on the day of resurrection. The jinn, the, those jinn, whether they're shayateen or not, they have lifespans which are much more than ours. So you have jinn with shayateen, which are 500, 600, 700, 800 years and more than that. It does eat and it does sleep and it does drink. So eating and drinking and sleeping is uh, something that the Prophet ﷺ had said that if the person when he makes its food, he says Bismillah, otherwise the shaitan will eat with him. If he drinks, he says Bismillah, otherwise the shaitan will drink with him. Uh, if he comes into his house and he doesn't say Bismillah, the shaitan would say, ah, I've got now some somewhere to sleep and if you don't mention your uh, uh, Allah's name on your food, then you will, have, you will say bed and breakfast. So he will come to your house and enjoy the sleep and he will enjoy as well the food. So Bismillah is the way to expel the shaitan away from you. Also the shayateen, they urinate. And the urination for verily the person who sleeps uh, all the time and he does not pray the Fajr time, the Fajr prayer, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the shaitan came and what? Urinated in his ear. So the urination had blocked 
the call of Allah to be coming into your heart. So he blocked your ear. It was mentioned some of the righteous people that when he missed the Fajr prayer, he put his finger into his ear and he found a balal, that means wet. He said, maybe it's from the shaitan urine. Oh, well, we say, whether believing or not believing, we say the shaitan urinates. But this urination, we cannot really establish the fact that say, come on doctor, see what is wet in me, my ears. I think we're going to need to test it. This belongs to the shaitan. We don't do that. But I believe that they urinate. And also we believe that they as well marry because they have the riya, offsprings offsprings and they have azwaj azwaj means wives how many allah ta'ala alam also they i said they are soul and they are also brief for very the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he was praying suddenly he put his hand like that and he after the prayer and he told the companion because the companion was wondering what was that is this part of the prayer now so they're saying allahu akbar we do like this now so the prophet will explain to them that this is the shaitan came to me and I held him by his neck. I held him and suffocated him. What does it mean suffocation? That means he doesn't breathe now anymore until his saliva came out. And if it hadn't been for the uh, call and supplication of my brother Sulaiman, I would have tied him up onto a pillar like this and I made the children of Medina to kick him and play him and do and smack him. And, but because Salman alayhi Sulaiman alayhi salam, he made a supplication to Allah, oh Allah give me a dominion that is not being given to anybody else. That is the control of the jinn. Also, they are as well, shayateen, they will as well, when the person makes a, a marital relation with his wife and he does not mention Allah, this shaitan will as well with you make the marital relationship. So that is why you have to say what? Bismillah. So when you approach your wife for marital relationship, say Bismillah. This will block the shaitan from as well intercoursing with you. A'udhu Billah, he intercourses with you. So you say Bismillah. Coming now, what the helpers of Iblis, the helpers of Iblis and what is uh, as well his weapons. Number one, soul and nafs. Inna nafsa la ammaratun bisu. Verily, your soul being built and created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have tendency towards evil. And the way to purify it is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَنَفْسِي وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Allah Azza wa had built the soul. And he put into it evil characteristics and good characteristics. And then he said, the one who purifies himself is successful. And the one who does not is unsuccessful. You purify yourself by the prayer, by the charity, by the fasting, by the good deeds. And you leave your soul on its rotten characteristics and evil characteristics by not praying, by not coming to the masjid, by not giving good conduct, by devouring the wealth of the orphan and so on and so forth. So the person who purifies himself is successful. If the one who does not, then he comes in the original sort of, you see, your soul has tendency, yourself has tendency to, for example, gather as much money as possible. Nobody can stop that, except if the person who had attached himself to Allah, dunya for him is nothing. But basically the self, the person left on his own, he would love to have more money. If he's got a valley of gold, he would like to have another valley of gold. Never ever think, oh, if I get a million, I'll stop. No, he wants another million. If he gets 100 million, he wants 200 million. And he wants to compete with those who are above him. Nothing will fill up the mouth of the son of Adam except for, for, for dirt, sand. You put sand and he will be stopped. So, coming back, so we say that the soul can be used as a man for the shaitan. The shaitan can use yourself. And that is why we explain in the month of Ramadan where the shayateen are chained. Why is it we find the people who are wicked, they're still wicked. Still people who are evil, still evil. Because their soul became their shaitan. Their self, which has been trained properly by shaitan, huh, made them huh, to take the role of a shaitan. So they've got their own shaitan in themselves. Never mind of the shaitan of the human being, because there are human beings who are themselves shaitan. And, and, and shaitan means what? Wicked, evil doers. There are plenty of them. Those they are not being tied up in Ramadan. They're, they're there. So in the month of Ramadan, you find this person is taken from his own whims and desire. Shaitan has been not whispering anymore. So also we have the women. And the women, because oh, the women now are going to complain. We are shaitan. No, 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 I'm not saying that. But the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the shaitan takes the women as an object by which he attempts people, drag them to the evil doing. So when the woman comes out of her house, shaitan. Is shaitan's eye gets bigger. Where she goes? 
So then he goes and, you know, whispers to this man, look at her, look at that, look at her. And that's where the corruption takes place. Also from the weapons that the shaitan uses, the magicians. And the sorcerers, I would say that like you have this center, it's a cold center for what? For Iman and Islam. The magician, the sorcerer, is a cold center for shaitan. Do you understand me? So the, the surgery for shaitan is the sorcerer, the fortune teller. Those are the ones who are like a mediator between human being and between the devil. A'udhu Billah. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ عَلَى مَنْ تَتَنَزَّلُ الشَّيَاطِينَ عَلَى مَنْ عَلَى كُلِّ أَفَّاكٍ أَفَيْ That is, shall I inform you upon whom Allah says, the shaitan goes down on, they descend upon whom? They are the affak, the athim, the liar, the sinner. The one, A'udhu Billah, who rejects the signs of Allah with a challenge. Not only he is a disbeliever, but also he challenges by, for example, throwing the book of Allah in the toilet. Or, for example, using it as tissue papers. That's how they do it. And that's how the shaitan comes to them. Because they've challenged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs. They have disobeyed Allah azza wa jal with a major kufr. Also from the weapons that are being used by the shaitan, al-kuffar, the disbelievers. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا الشَّيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمُنُونَ Verily, we made the shayateen from the ins. Awliya, the, the shayateen from the jinn, we made them awliya, they are the wali. The wali is the closest person, the one who is your role model. They to be the role model for those kuffar. So the kuffar are as well weapons are being used by the shaitan against those who are righteous. What are his capabilities and what are his power, this enemy that we are talking about in tonight? Number one, he sees us where we can't see him. Allah says, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ Surah Al-A'raf, Allah says that he sees you from places where you can't see you. And that is why we say, the shaitan in his real form, you cannot be seen. If anybody claims, I've seen shaitan, or my CCTV camera picked up shaitan, that is untrue. Or you want to Sheikh Google, Sheikh Jeev, Yahoo, and YouTube, and you said, this is shaitan, all of it lies. And that's why Imam Shafi'i said, Rahimahullah, if any person claim that he had seen shaitan on his real form, then his shahada will not be accepted. You know, he's a testimony or he's a witness. We will not accept his testimony because he is a liar. You can't say that you have seen shaitan on his real form. Nobody can see shaitan on his real form. Allah created him, but from his power is that he could make himself into different figures. When he makes himself into a different figure, like for example, a snake, like a black dog, like a f elephant, then you could see him on that form, not on the real form. So for example, uh, a snake, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, اقتلوا الأبتر وذا الطفيتين Kill the abtar وذا الطفيتين The abtar is the snake which has got no tail. I don't know if you've seen them, a small snake, like they've got no tail, no pointed end. And the other one, which has got two strikes of lines on top of it, ذا الطفيتين why? Because they are the one يذهبان الحمل and يذهبان البصر ويسقطان الحمل They will make you blind and they will drop the load of a pregnant woman. And I have seen a documentary by somebody who is British about those snakes who are no tails they've got. And this is something which has been discovered lately that he was putting a helmet which has got glass, you know the helmet for the driving the motorbike. And he said those snakes They've got a venom that cannot be seen by the normal naked eye. And when they sprint that venom, if it goes into your eye, it makes you blind. So he was in confronting one of these snakes and the snake threw the venom. And because of this camera that would record, you know, how many pictures and frames per second, you know, they got that venom and traveling and he was onto his helmet, onto that glass and he could see it. Subhanallah. And he said, if that venom went in my eye, it'll get me blind. Now that person, somebody has to tell him, the Prophet I'm told us, 1,400 years ago about this. And they dropped the load, which is some pregnant women. So you kill this type of snakes. These type of snakes, there is no saying, Bismillah, get out. For other types of snakes, if they are living in your house, you may not kill them until you take permission. How you take permission? Say, Bismillah, get out. In the name of Allah, come out. You know why? It could be what? It could be a jinn. And that happened at the time when the Battle of the Trench, you never heard about the Battle of the Trench, Ghazwat al-Khandaq. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had this idea of building the trench in order to make the enemies cannot invade the Medina. 
And at that time, there was one companion who just got married recently. So he used to work in the trench and dig, but he t- sometimes he takes an excuse, Passenger of Allah, I've just been recently married and I want to go and see my wife. He says to him, okay, but no problem, take your weapon with you, because I don't trust those Jews who are surrounding the Medina, they might kill you. So, have your weapon with you. So he takes his spear and he goes. Well, as soon as he arrives to his house, he finds his wife outside the house, dressed up indecently. It's not like he dressed up for the person, woman she wants to go out. It's a dress which is, for example, the inside of the house. He saw her like this. The first reaction that happens to a companion who has got this sort of passion and jealousy, straight away, with this PA, wants to kill her. He kind of, he can't tolerate his wife to be outside like this. So he wants to kill her. She said to him, عنك, uh, Stop and don't penetrate me with your spear. Just look what is inside me. That's what driven me out of the house. First of all, see what is inside? That's why I'm outside the house. I couldn't, you know, the women when they see a mice, never mind to see a snake. Huh? They get out. Oh, well, I'm here, I'm afraid of mice as well. I have to admit. So he went inside and he saw a big snake inside. Straight away with a spear, he goes into it and he thinks he killed it. The snake goes back onto him. So he fights with the snake. Both of them die. The narrator of the hadith said, we don't know which one died first. The companion or the snake. When the Prophet ﷺ was told about this, he said, Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajiun. This is the calamity sort of dua, supplication. Then he said, Verily, there are some of your brothers from the jinn. They have occupied these houses. So if you enter the house, say, Bismillah, get out. Bismillah, get out. Bismillah, get out. For three days. And then if it doesn't get out, it's either it is a snake or it's a jinn. And he doesn't want to come out of the house. So if a human being if he doesn't come out of the house for three days, I'll kill him. Never mind a, a snake. <laughs> but that two, those two types of snakes, which is the short no tail, and the other one's got two lines on the, the back of it, kill them and there is no permission for that. So the jinn, the shayateen, are able to form themselves into a snake. And also we have others. <coughs> Like for example, we know the shayateen that can form themselves into the uh, human being trying to steal. Prophet Wasallam, when he had appointed Abu Hurairah to guard the charity, which is the dates. And the dates was collected for the Zakat al-Futr. Have you heard about Zakat al-Futr? Zakat al-Futr, which is this pee paid, which is from the food. And it's to be paid the last two days before the Eid. It's called Zakat al-Futr. So Abu Hurairah, he was the person who is in charge of looking after that. Now, one night he sees someone, he's a human being, and he catches him. He's about to steal. So he said, I'm going to take you to the Messenger of Allah. No, don't take me to the Messenger of Allah. I, will, I am a poor person, so please let me go. So he sympathized with him, he let him go. Now he goes to the Prophet ﷺ. Prophet of Allah, he has been told by revelation. Abu Hurairah, ماذا فعل أسيرك البارحة? Your prisoner of war, your captured person that you captured him last night, what happened to him? <laughs> Already the Prophet knows the Messenger of Allah, he was about to steal, and when I caught him and I said, I'm going to take you to the Messenger of Allah, he said, and he complained that he was poor. I said, I let him go. He said, Verily, he, is, he has lied, and he's going to come back again. So Abu Huraira, he said, I went to the second night, and I'm waiting for him because the Prophet said, He's going to come back again. So I'm waiting for him. He comes, he's about to steal. I got him. Now that's it, I'm going to take it to the Prophet of Allah. No, you know, I belong to such and such tribes called Nasibin. Nasibin, and uh, I've got family and wives and children. Please let me go. So he sympathized and let him go. So on the following day, the Prophet said, Ah, what did you capture, man? He did. Messenger of Allah, he said he belongs to such and such tribe. And he lied, and very he's going to come to you again. <coughs> so, third night, he said, That's it. If I capture him, I'm going to take him again. Third night, he comes, he captures him. That's it. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's not going to lie now to him about children. I'll teach you something. If you say it, Allah will put a guard upon you against the shayateen the whole night. Now he doesn't know who he's speaking to. So, okay, I'll exchange that for, for your release. So he released him and then he went to the Prophet and he told him, Messenger of Allah, he said to him, Verily, sadaqaka wa huwa kadu. He's a liar all the time, but in this time he was not lying. He was truthful. For very least, is Ayat al Kursi, he told him. When you say it, there will be a guard on him all night. If you say Ayat al Kursi, Shaitan will not approach you. And people have tried that when the Shaitan come and presses on top of them. This is, if you had this sort of experience, that means the Shaitan had pressed on your head. Just start. Allahu la, before you finish, La ilaha. He's running away. <laughs> he runs. He doesn't even want to look back. 
So this is the shaitan, and subhanallah, look at Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he caught a human being. So a human being is talking. And you know, for the fact that during the battle as well of uh, Badr, shaitan came and he told the people of Quraysh, you know, what to do and how to fight. And then when he had enraged them and made successful sort of a trial and attempt to make the, this battle, then he saw, while he was with them, saw something that they can't see. He saw the angels. Allah had sent them to help the Muslims. So straight away the shaitan, he said, Inni bari umminkum. Inni ara ma la taraun. Inni akhaf Allah. Wallahu shaykh al Verily, I'm afraid of Allah. Allah has got punishment. I see things that you don't see. You see the angels coming to help the Muslims. He ran away. So he was a human being all the way talking to them. Also, he had been seen to be in an elephant. And he has been seen to be as a smoke. He has been seen as well as a black dog. For the black dog, Prophet ﷺ, he said, that is, يَقْطَعُ الصَّلَاةِ When you are praying and you don't have a sutra, a shield, then three things will break off your prayer. That means it will invalidate and nullify your prayer. Number one, that is, he said, the adult woman. The adult woman, if she's a kid, no problem. She passes between you and your prostration spot and you have no sutra, then it's validated. Number two, the donkey. Regardless how old is the donkey, if it passes between you and your prostration place, it will nullify. Third one is the black dog. Messenger of Allah, what sort of distinguishing about and special about this black dog? I mean, we've got black dog, red dog, what is black? He said, black dog is shaitan. And black dog, he said, al-bahim. Al-bahim means totally black. Not a single white hair in it or gray hair in it. Black is to be shaitan. Those black dogs, you're not allowed to have them hunting dogs. You're allowed to have hunting dogs. You're not allowed to have black dogs as guards. You're not allowed to have black dogs as blind uh, leader, you know, blind sort of guidance. You can't go blind guide. You can't have that. You can't have the black dog in anything, even to be a, for example, guarding the, the farm. Right, now we as well, he has a weapon, which is, which, which is his capability is al waswasa. He will come to waswasa. The waswasa is whispering. He comes to you and he tells you, gives you thoughts and ideas. He comes to your dreams and he plays around with you. He plays around with you in the dream. For example, you see that somebody is trying to kill you. Ah, total sort of Hollywood film in your dreams. A uh, monster coming to chop your head and you're running away. Um, uh, one one, one uh, person, he woke up, he said, I woke up and I was biting my husband. Um, <laughs> that's from the shaitan, of course. <laughs> I woke up when I was biting uh, my husband's hand. Uh, this is true, by the way, subhanAllah. Uh, I know a person that he, you know, he had did more than that. He did more than that. I'm not going to go in details because <laughs> yeah, this is very funny. And we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the visions are of three things. Number one, from Allah, you find yourself in paradise. You see the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see yourself making tawaf in the Kaaba. This is good. This is from Allah. And number two, which is from the Shaitan. You find nightmare, something you don't like, snake, black dog, uh, something. If, it, if it's persistence all the time, then you've got a problem. You have to treat it. And the third one, which is something from Hadith al-Nafs. That is the person, what he does during the day. That is why somebody he said, if you start collecting tomatoes the whole day, I guarantee you're going to collect it in your dreams. <laughs> do you understand that? I guarantee for you. Because you can you know, have you that into your dreams. Because what you do during the day, you have it during the night. Right. Also, the Salah. It comes to the Salah. It's somebody, he's been appointed. It's called Khinzab. Khinzab is a person, is a shaitan. Khinzab, he's his shaitan and his followers. He's got followers. All this group is just coming to you for the salah. He comes to you every say time. You say, Allahu Akbar. Now, how to maximize your profit? Everything you remember except for your prayer. And that is why the person, how many prayer, how many have I done? Four or three, two, four, five, six. All the time. You've got a problem like this, making sujood sah all the time. You've got a problem, brother. Sujood sah happens, but not every time. Allahu <laughs> Sujood sah every second, sujood sah, sujood sah. Uh, even in the sujood sah, he makes sahu in such a sahu. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So he said, I'm like sujud. And then he makes sahu. He forgets to make sujud sahu. <laughs> Subhanallah. The shaitan is overwhelmed him, and he doesn't know what he's doing. And this person who had put his money somewhere and he forgot, he looked for them. He said, it's a fortune. So, he's not, so he heard about this sheikh, Sheikh Abu Hanifa. Abu Hanifa Nu'man, mashallah, great sheikh. So. He thought he will solve his dilemma and he will tell him where is the money has been hidden. So he said, Sheikh Abu Hanifa, you know, I had my money somewhere. Can you just tell me? Now Abu Hanifa realized that this person, he thinks he's coming to a sorcerer, a fortune teller, not a sheikh of knowledge. He said, okay, mm, solution for you. Now he knows that this person is not eager to pray his night prayer. 
He said, okay, you pray your Isha after you sleep and before Fajr, during the last third of the night, wake up. Make two rak'ah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah Allah will show you where you've hid your money. So the man, for the very, very first time, he's done this. <laughs> he goes, and the story he says, sleeps. I don't know if he slept or not, but he woke up and he made the wudu and now he's about to make the two rak'ah. He said, Allahu Akbar, oh, under the rock in that mountain. <laughs> Straight away. He left the prayer and he started running towards that mountain. And he found in the following day, Jazakallah khairan Shaykh Abu Hanifa, oh, my Allah reward you. I found my money. What happened? Well, live, as soon as he said, Allahu Akbar, I remembered. He said, I knew that that cursed shaitan will never let you to complete two sincere rak'ah to Allah. So I knew it. But it's not, by the way, a solution for everybody who forgets something to go and pray two rak'ah to find him and make the shaitan play around with him. But that happened even with my friend of mine. He had, uh, I remember, a gas bottle. With gas bottles, as in our country, we don't have the gas being, you know, connected to us, except for bottles. You know, you live in Pakistan, you know that. The gas bottle is expensive, those, you know, in, the, in those countries. 25, 30 pounds, and people can't afford them. So he, you know, and there are as well people who nick, you know, the gas bottles. You put them outside to be exchanged, somebody comes and nick them. So he put this gas bottle, but he didn't find it. And he's poor, and he's trying to find it. And he told me, he's a sheikh. I said, tried to find it. I looked everywhere. I couldn't find it. And I looked at the time, and almost I missed my maghrib. So he's between maghrib and isha, it's a very short time. So I missed my, oh, I'm going to do my maghrib. <laughs> so as soon as I started my maghrib prayer, he said, Allahu Akbar, he said, the wardrobe. <laughs> he put it in the wardrobe. <laughs> But he, he laughed, he smiled, and then he continued his prayer. He didn't want to go. Then after he finished the prayer, he put it in the cupboard, inside where the clothes are. So subhanAllah, that's the shaitan reminds you in the moments where you don't want to be disturbed. That is, to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> and adhan, when you, you see, adhan as well, and the Prophet said, if you make the adhan, the shaitan will go out and flee, and he's got durat, like passing wind. He's like passing wind noise. He doesn't like the Adhan. So when they finish the Adhan, he comes. And then the Iqamah, he runs. The Iqamah comes, comes back in. So you say, Allahu Akbar. Then he'll say to you, remember, remember, remember. He keeps reminding you of everything. So you remember everything, isn't it? And you do everything in the prayer, except for the prayer. Huh? You pray, uh, and that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, if a person prays two rakah, just two rakah, and in which he does not talk about anything to himself, then he will have all his past sins forgiven. It's easy, <laughs> but it's not easy. <laughs> Just even to think about, if I do this, I'm going to get you know, my sins forgiven. <laughs> even if you thought about that, you might as well lose the reward. You have to just do them because, and this needs training. It, doesn't, it needs discipline. You have to teach yourself to do it. It doesn't come like this. I'm going to do it. You can't do it. You have to train yourself. Train yourself. Train yourself until yourself becomes a soldier to Allah, not a soldier to the shaitan. When it becomes a soldier of Allah, it, this soul of yours becomes like a weapon against the shaitan. It will be even a reproach towards you. It will tell you off. And this reminds me of what happened to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, who had trained himself. He's a reciter. Whom the Prophet ﷺ said, if Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said to you something, believe him. Take it from him. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, one of the seven people who embraced Islam at the beginning. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, whom he said, the Prophet of Allah, if you want to recite the Quran as it was revealed to me by Jibreel alayhi salam, then recite it in the way of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, we have his silsila of narration, chain all the way to the Prophet Muhammad sallam, to Jibreel, to the Almighty. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he comes during the Jum'ah. And he comes, and he usually is number one. But this time he finds himself what? He is the fourth. Three people before him. You know, if you came to the masjid and you found yourself three people before you on the fourth one, do you bother about that? I don't think you bother even if you just caught up with the last rakah of the Jum'ah. Well, you haven't got used to come to the earlier to the Jum'ah. This probably comes very early, but three people. So now the hadith says he started talking to himself. Fourth person and the fourth person, inshallah, not far away from the mercy of Allah. Fourth, he's like telling himself, calm down. I know I've done a mistake. Uh, but he's telling him, well, you are the fourth person. Why did you come the fourth person? And come down in a fourth person, inshallah, he's still having, he's calming himself down because he trained himself to be the soldier of Allah, not the soldier of shaitan. Coming back, we know as well that these shayateen, as we said, they have as well closeness to us. Verily Iblis, he is thrown as upon the water and he spends, sends his soldiers and when he sends his soldiers, he tells them to do their own task. Some, 
they will come and they, during the night they will come with their reports. So during the day, in the morning they go. During the evening they will come. And each one will tell Iblis what he has done. So one of them he said, oh, I've done him. I made him to insult someone. Ah, yeah, very good, but he's about to go back and reconcile with the person. Oh, I have done him, for example, to divorce his wife. Mm, very well done. Very well done. Ant to ant. Now we're done. Oh, I made him to make shirk. Well, very good, but he's about maybe to embrace Islam again. The other one, I made him to kill his brother. You are the one. He steps down from his place, which is the throne, and then he gives him the crown. Step, you come into my position. That is his target, to make you kill your brother. And that is what's happening these days, brothers killing brothers. Do I need to prove it to you? You look around. So he said, you have, you know why? Because if a person commits shirk, he might go back. But if you kill somebody, how can you get give him life back again? It's been done, finished. Killing. And that is it, that's the one. You are in my position. You are the king. And he gives them the crown. And that's the hadith authenticated by our Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah in his silsil al-Sahihah. Coming back, also the Prophet ﷺ, he said that he's too close to us, that he runs in the veins, not the blood runs in the veins. For verily the Prophet of Allah one day, he is coming out talking to his wife Safi, and it was a bit dark and then two companions came and they saw the Prophet of Allah with this covered woman, they started going faster. So the Prophet said, take it easy, it is Safi, I mean it's my wife. He said, Subhanallah, I mean, how can we have any doubt about you, Messenger of Allah, you know, making a sort of conversation with a, a, f a foreign woman, a strange woman? He said, Verily the shaitan runs in the human being, the son of Adam, just like the blood runs in the veins. So even though they are companions, even though, but you might, shaitan comes and says, look, look, he's talking to women, and he's telling us not to talk to women, and the Prophet of Allah is talking to women. And that is why you, you need to clarify, even to your brothers. Don't you ever think, I'm a sheikh, they will never suspect me. No, brother. I'm a person who's always an imam. No, brother. Make sure that you don't make yourself into a situation where people can think badly about you. You have to clarify. Clarification. Al-bayan yatrudu shaitan. A principle. That is clarification will expel the shaitan. So clarify the situation. Tell them. Make sure that you are clarified. And the shaitan, as the Prophet وسلم, he said that he is jathimun ala qalbi mi adam. He is on top of the heart of the son of Adam. So if uh, he mentions Allah, he goes down. And if he had forgotten to mention Allah, he will make whispering. Qal inna ash-shaytana jathimun ala qalbi mi adam. Fa'idha dhakar Allah khanas wa idha nasiya waswas. So if you forget to say Allah, he comes to whisper to you. He says Allah, he goes down. And you say Allah according to what the Prophet of Allah had said to you to say Allah. Allah means La ilaha illallah. Not the word Allah, Allah, Allah. The shaitan likes that word. The way to say it like Allah and shake your head Allah and then Allah. And then in Arafah, I've seen them. I don't know what God they are worshipping. And there are people coming to Arafah. This is not the way to mention Allah. Nor it is the way that the Prophet ﷺ had told us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has a style in fighting us, the shaitan. Let's talk about some of the styles that he fights us with. He comes to you as a nasih. You know what a nasih means? Means like a sincere uh, advisor. He wants to advise you. Uh, we have lots of stories. I'm not going to go, sorry, Barsisa. Look into that, Barsisa. Uh, but I want to uh, make some sort of uh, uh, explanation of the ayah. وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ he said to Adam and our mother Hawa, that is, I am very sincere advisor to you. Go and eat from the apple. Nothing happens to you. Go and eat from the tree. And he said, by Allah, Qasam say, Qasmi. Qasam and Billah. I don't worry. I am a sincere advisor to you. And they listened to him. So the shaitan comes to you to advise you. And that is why the story is being mentioned and by the scholars. They said, a man, he wanted suddenly to go and cut a tree which has been worshipped by, by other people beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he got up and he wanted to go and cut that tree. So the shaitan came to him and as a former human being he said, why are you going? So I'm going to cut that tree which is worshipped beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you want that tree for? To cut it for? It's not your job. It's not your business. Let these people. No, it's been worshipped beside I'm going to uncut it. I'll tell you what, if you are 
go back, I promise you, go back and you'll find underneath your pillow such and such quantity of money. Mm. So he thought about it, okay. So he went back and he did what the man had told him. And that he slept and the following day, he looked underneath his pillow, finds nothing. He was so enraged. No, I am going to cut the tree which is worshipped by, by other than Allah. So he went. Then the man came back to him, which is a shaitan. He said to him, where are you heading? He said, I'm heading to go and cut that tree which is worshipped by Sayyidina Allah. He said, they are a liar. He said, no, I'm going to go. He said, oh, and then he beats him up and he goes on top of him. He said, you are talking to the shaitan. First time I wasn't able to get you because you were coming out sincere to Allah. But now you're coming because you're enraged. You didn't find the money. You didn't find the money. You came out because you are in, you're angry. And that is why you're not angry for the sake of Allah. I'm capable of uh, defeating you. So if you are a person who is doing something not for the sake of Allah, then you are vulnerable. Also, his style is to step by step. As a person who is coming, mashallah, with a beard to the masjid, he's not going to come to you, leave the prayer. He's going to be an idiot. He's not, he's not, he's not a, a good enemy. He's not a, a, a sensible enemy. Coming to the person who is praying all the time, stop praying, he will not come to that. He will not do that to you. He will come to you as a sheikh. A real sheikh, he comes to you and tells you, ah, I'll tell you what, uh, today, you know, you're going to need to sleep a bit more for the work, so don't make sort of duha. Oh, they make so this. They'll start with your voluntary until he takes the shield away. And your voluntary is your shield for your obligatory. You take the shield away. Oh, you know, you are a surgeon, you are a doctor. You should know, you, you should be. It's too little gap between Dhuhr and Asr. I'll tell you what, make jama combination. Yeah, he makes fat for himself, combine al and Asr. And Maghrib and Isha, oh yes, because you're tired, make a Maghrib and Isha so you could go back to sleep. Oh, I'll tell you what, you're, a, you're, you're busy, you're a taxi driver. You could combine Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib and Isha, that's it. <laughs> During the night, you come, and that's what they do. During the five daily prayers, mashallah, Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib. And it becomes too much for him. It takes about 25 minutes to pray the five daily prayers in one go, even with supersonic fast speed, but still, it takes a bit of time. I'll tell you what, just do the Jumu'ah. So you just see him on the Jumu'ah. Jumu'ah, and sometimes his Jumu'ah is not here. I'll tell you what, just come on the Eid. You know the Eid prayer? He's going, you don't come from the Eid prayer. You look at brother, I never thought you were a Muslim brother. Because <laughs> you never seen him in any masjid. In new faces, never seen him at all. Right? They came because their family coming out. They come, nobody's making breakfast uh, you know, at home, for example, he's coming out. Uh, for the first time, just the Eid. He only comes with the Eid. Or in Ramadan. Yeah, they, we call them other the Ramadani Yun. You know Ramadani? Ramadanis. Ramadanis? Just a Ramadan. After Ramadan, they go back to what their old habit is. Of course, we're not going to sort of scandal them. We're not going to talk second, but we, we will stretch our arm towards them. But that is what is the case. That the end, the shaitan comes to you as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tattabi'u khutuwat shaitan Oh, you who believe, don't follow the steps of the shaitan. He did not say, Oh, you who believe, don't follow shaitan. He, he said, don't follow the what? The steps, step after the step. And he is as well sitting in the middle of the path. For verily, imagine that the path to Jannah is like this. It's a motorway. And this shaitan, he is sitting in the middle. He is there just saying, no way I'm going to make you to go to paradise. No way I'm there. Unless you say, Bismillah, A'udhu Billah, something like this, he will run away. But he is there in the middle of the path. Imagine, he doesn't want you to go to paradise. That's his job. So if he succeeded, you're a loser. And if he had failed, you are a winner. And he is one, he would share you into your wealth. He would share you into your wife. He would share you into your food. He would share you into your drink. He would share you into your offspring. He is sharing to you into your visions. He shares you in everything. So even he had had a war with the prophets. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, as the Prophet said, he said, in Sahih al-Muslim, مَا مِن مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وُكِّلَ بِهِ قَرِينٍ مِنَ الْجِنِّ Not a single person of you, whether he's a prophet, or whether he's a normal person, he has his qareen. Qareen means a companion from the jinn. He's all the time with you. قَالْ وَقَارِينٌ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَ And also a companion from the angels. So you got one qareen from the shaitan, jinn, and one qareen from the malaika. The shaitan qareen is telling you to what? to be kufr. And Qareen of the Malaika is to be telling you to be good. So, and as for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, even you Messenger of Allah, he said, even me, but my Qareen from the Jinn, the Shaitan, he said in one of the narration, Aslama or Aslamu. Aslama means he embraced Islam. Aslamu means I am being saved against him. He doesn't do anything, he can't do anything to me. 
So the shay- the qareen of the Prophet of Allah, either he's a Muslim or he's a qareen, which is what? He cannot do any harm to the Prophet of Allah. Now the qareen of yours is a kafir. So this qareen now, he will try to bring every shaitan and every magician. And that's why the magician, he knows about you. Because whatever you know about yourself, your qareen knows about you. And that's how he communicates with those fortune teller and those magicians and tell them about your private life that nobody knows except for yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why the one of the shuyukh, he had a, a neighbor called Abu Muhammad. And he said to him that, you know, there's such and such person every time, you know, he come to him, he knows what I'm doing. He knows well, what is my private life and subhanAllah. So, uh, what can we do? So he knew that he's a fortune teller. He said, okay, take me to him. I want to see this guy because he wants to expose him to the public. So he took him. As soon as they went inside, now the Sheikh had prepared himself. So he said, Ha, Sheikh Abu Yusur. His name is Abu Yusur. Ha. So he knew his name. So Abu Muhammad, he told him, see, he knew your name already before he even came in. He said, I don't know, don't worry. Because his Qareen told him. Right. So he said to him, uh, I've heard that you, that you, a person, you know everything about, the, you know, Whatever you, you know. So he said, yeah, okay. He said, okay, I've got some money with me. I'm going to now take some money in my hand and you will tell me how much it is. He said, yeah, I will know. Very easy. So he went inside, or he turned his face, I can't remember. And he started counting 150. So he took 150 in his hand. And in the other hand, he took money like that, which he himself doesn't know. So he said to him, how much is in my hand? Easily, because he knows it. His Karin knows it. Communication, 150, correct. How much is in this hand? You don't know, your qareen doesn't know, then he doesn't know. He made a number, it was not correct. So he proved to him, he said, look, he's a shaitan. He is working with the shayateen, and he's working with the qareen. So from his weapons as well, that he uses your qareen. The qareen of yours knows everything that you know about yourself. So be careful from making yourself vulnerable to this qareen by putting yourself in disobedience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, he has with the salihin and with the righteous, he's the shaitan, he would have his war with them, just like with the prophets. We have a story of Abdul Qadir, Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, our Abdul Qadir, not the Sufi Abdul Qadir. Abdul Qadir is a Salafi. Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, he, the shaitan came to him and he was narrated with him. He said, and Abdul Qadir, he saw him coming this shaitan, he came to him like on a throne. And a throne, you know, like he's a god. So he said to him, Najawta bi ilmik. Ya Sheikh Abdul Qadir, that you have got salvation because of your knowledge. He said, Khasi'ta, disgrace to you. Ya Shaitan, I know you. A'udhu billahi mink. Laqad najawtu bi fadli min Allahi wa rahmah. I had got salvation because of the mercy of Allah. And you know for a fact, nobody would enter paradise except by the mercy of Allah. Even you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, even me, I will not enter paradise except by the maghfirah and the rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal. You will not enter paradise except by Allah's mercy and Allah's forgiveness. Yes, you will be, as a result of your deeds, going to enter paradise. But you see, how many of you would know that Allah had accepted their good deeds? How many of you? You don't know. You make a prayer, but you don't know. And that is, you wish that Allah would accept one prayer. You've done the prayer according to what Allah told you, but do you know that he's been accepted or not? Allahu Ta'ala A'lam. We do what we can. Otherwise, we have to ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala's forgiveness. And we come now to how to protect ourselves from the shaitan. Okay, protection of ourselves from the shaitan. I have written here some notes as for the protection. And that is, we first of all make isti'adah. The isti'adah is very important. So, we fight him through the book and the sunnah and we say a'udhu billahi as-sami' al-alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim min hamzihi wa nafkhihi wa nafthih Allah says wa imma yanzaghannaka min ash-shaytan nazghun fasta'idh billah innahu huwa as-sami' al-alim and when you go to make food, to eat food or drink or to make marital relation say bismillah for verily the shaytan if you say bismillah he will not eat and never ever use your intellect to fight him Meaning that you think that you're going to be cleverer than him. And it reminds me of a story which is being said by Ibn al-Jawzi. That is a person which is al The news of those people who are fool and idiots. In it he says, as a man, he used to eat salty food a lot. And he never says Bismillah. Then straight away he runs to the water and he says Bismillah. Well, why are you doing this? He said, I'm torturing my shaitan. 
<laughs> How are you touching him, Michelle? <laughs> Saying, well, I'm eating salty food, salty food. And I say, don't be say bismillah, he's eating with me. So once I get choked, you know, I go to the water, I didn't say bismillah, he can't drink water. So he's choking now. <laughs> what an idiot person he is. That's what I call akhbar al wal mughaffaleen. Now you can't fight him like this. No way. Because how do you know that first of all, that if the shaitan eats salty food, he needs water. That's number one. And how do you know that he's beforehand, he already knows your plans because of his qarim. Uh, so how can he do that? So how do I fight him? By the book and the sunnah, not by analogy. And like that, that fool man. Also, make yourself to say Allah's name in everything. When you take your clothes off, you say Bismillah. For very little shaitan sees your aura. And you say Bismillah, a shield will come in like a, a barrier. And you can't see your aura. So you say Dhikrullah. Dhikrullah is the best. Huh? Dhikrullah is the best. It makes your life, mashallah, it makes your house your family is a fortress. Shaitan cannot penetrate. I have Wallahi in my surgery. I do have lots of people coming. I've been possessed and I've been... Audhu Billah. Wallahi, I'm telling you, brothers. I just had recently three cases of incest. Muslim incest. Wallahi. One with a grandfather. One with a father. And one with a brother. I don't know how, how, how can we... This is a Shaitan, Audhu Billah. A brother with a sister. Grandfather with a granddaughter, a brother with his own sister. And I'm talking about that I've seen those girls who have been shattered and distracted. I talk to them. So this is where from the shaitan. How can the shaitan make this person, you know, A'udhu Billah. You can think of it, you know. Islamically, these people will be killed. Islamically speaking. How can they do that? How can they? This is the shaitan. I'm just telling you that in the surgery of mine, I've seen lots of people who have been possessed. And when I asked them about that, I will find out either they are far away from the religion, either they have got religion but it is wrong religion, shirk, either they've got, for example, uh, companions from the um, non-good companions, no disbelievers and so on and so forth. This person basically, his house is a good place for shaitan. His place is full of music, his place is full of disobedience and a'udhu billah, calls himself as a Muslim. And never ever think that if he's got money, a nice car or a nice house, he is happy. Wallahi, those people who come to me, most of them are rich. Oh, most of them are rich. I'm not saying all of them, but most of them are rich. Very rich. And I was really, subhanAllah. And inside myself, I, so I smile. Inside myself. No, 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 man. Look, Allah is capable of sending his mercy to a person who's living in a mere tent or a mere shack. And a person who's living in a mansion, Allah deprived him from this happiness. Happiness is not in the money, brother. Happiness is within yourself, within your family. That's the happiness. This person, he can't even say, I can't come to the house. As soon as I put my key in the key, you know, the hole, hell is going to break loose. He's scared. He's scared to go inside. Everything's going to be on top of him. So everywhere he goes except for his house. Why? Because no dhikrullah. There's no dhikrullah. Bismillah. Dhikrullah, ya akhi. La ilaha illallah. Say the adhkar al-sabah, adhkar al-masa. Say the the adhkar for your sleep and all of that. Quran is a recitation as well. This is a Quran and the Quran is very important because the Quran as well, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, always purify your mouth. Say to my servants and my worshippers to say the good, good words because you see one word can destroy a, a community and also a good word can be uh, something to reconcile between brothers. Uh, a, a bad word can as well uh, split between brothers and could cause destruction and a good word could bring people together um, so all, all of that as well you could use the uh, you know make the adhan and that's important some people will make the prayer which is obligatory at the house even the sisters they make the adhan so adhan as well before they do the prayer so when they make the congregation prayer which is very important you have to be emphasize that your children your wife they make the obligatory prayer in the house as what jama'ah don't make them to do it in their own and investigate if your sons and your daughters at school they're praying. Just don't just like this. Huh? No, tell them. Did you pray? Some of them they don't pray at school. So break them pray. Just tell them that word, inshallah. And when they pray, make sure they make the adhan. So when the adhan is being called in the house, this shaitan doesn't like to have, a, to, have to live in a place where Allah's name is being mentioned. He doesn't like to live in a place where the adhan is being mentioned. He doesn't like where the place where his prayer has been prayed. And don't make your houses as a cemetery where there is no prayer. Make it a house which is full of the of Allah. Full of... Uh, remember, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had magic upon him. Yes? Under six months. Six months he was under the magic. 
And he's the Prophet of Allah. And you can't be more secure than the Prophet of Allah. So magic can't take place. How can I secure myself my magic against magic? Don't let anybody in your house. Don't let anybody to go and eat your food. Investigate who's going to come to my house. If you let someone you don't know, you might take something from your house. And this is the end of yours. That's it. One person, he had a piece of cake. And his life has never been cake and peace whatsoever after that. One piece of cake. In his stomach, he can't take it out. He's stuck with it now. And his life is, a'udhu billah. Because of the magic has been given to him. So know who's going to come to your house. Know that person. And also, that is, as the Prophet Sallallahu he said, لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يكل طعامك إلا تقي Don't make except for the pious to be your companion. And for the righteous to be your, the person who eats your food. That's the person you want to have. Not anybody to come to your house. Make sure as well that your, your children are befriending people who are good. Because a sahibu sahib. What is a sahibu sahib? A sahib means the companion. Sahib means he'll pull you. And he will pull you to paradise or pull you to the hellfire. So choose your sahib towards the one who reminds you of the prayer. I know it's the prayer time now. Uh, it's in about five minutes. If you could just delay that prayer for another five minutes, we just have the questions, and inshallah, we will do the Isha and we'll finish. Uh, is there any food after this? No, there's no food. I'm sorry, brothers. No. Khair, <laughs> inshallah. The other masjid, they had food. <laughs> when you make the dua against shaitan, is it okay if you say it in your head, or does it have to be allowed? When I say the dua, in my, when I say any dhikr, any dhikr, the tongue has to be fresh. Allah says that your tongue should be fresh in the remembrance of Allah. So a person when he is, for example, reciting the Fatiha, if he's doing like this, what are you doing brother? I'm reading the Fatiha. Where? In my brain. It doesn't count. That prayer of you is, is invalid. It doesn't count. That rakah. You have to say it with your tongue. I don't have to make a noise. So if you do like this, I'm going to disturb. My neighbor, Alhamdulillah. And he will, Alhamdulillah. So you're going to be acting like khins of shaitan to the person, basically, the starting from his prayer. So, so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi recitation was known from his movement of his beard. He's moving his beard. Sometimes he will make it loud to make the companions to hear what he's reciting in the Dhuhr, reciting in the Asr, reciting in the two raka'ah of the Asr, the two raka'ah of the, uh, two raka'ah of the Isha, because that's silent prayer. So, that is the way, so you say, mentioned, the dua with your tongue. Laugh. <laughs> Fadali. My wife's praying at home like you just mentioned, just by herself, doing the prayer. Very good. She makes the adhan even if she's on her own. Yeah. She makes the adhan. Adhan that means inside. If she's, a, if she's got a son who's a boy, he makes the adhan. But no problem for Aisha, she's to make the adhan. So making the adhan, but she doesn't go outside and Allah. No. Adhan is within. Uh, because I'm saying this, have you, have you, have you heard lately that uh, there was a, a prayer, Alhamdulillah, has finished. They made it in Oxford. A lady, she is leading the prayer of the Jumu'ah, mashallah. And on YouTube, I've seen the woman is making the adhan. And she's saying, Allah, mashallah. I'm making the adhan for the men. And, uh, and they're praying, you know, feet to feet, shoulder to shoulder, men and women, mashallah. No gap, men and women, huh? Men and women, mashallah. What type of prayer is this? Alhamdulillah, it's only about... I don't know, eight or ten people pray that prayer. But BBC, they brought them in a way, the camera was a very evil way of taking it. In such a way, there's only the eight people that's appearing. Because there's nobody behind them anyway. <laughs> it happened in Oxford, because I was teaching in Oxford, and I know about this uh, fact. Alhamdulillah, that lady, you know what they've heard about her, the African lady. Uh, she's done it, and uh, with her, supported by a, uh, I'm sorry, a Pakistani woman, who she looks evil, well, Iyadu Billah, even her face. And they're trying to change their religion. You see, these people are more harm to the Muslims than those who are non-Muslims. Because they are making, this is Islam. This is not Islam. This is not Islam. Okay, she makes the other than inshallah. Naam, Fadal Sheikh. Yeah, uh, Sheikh, uh, what's the, it's a right word, is it cream or Kareem? Cream? Uh, cream is something to put your oh, skin. Kareem, Kareem, you said? Ah, Kareem, oh, the cream, so cream. Kareem, 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 with a qaf. I thought it was a cream, you know, the cream. <laughs> or Kareem means, Kareem in Arabic means uh, uh, generous. So, Al Kareem, Allah. Abdul Kareem. Okay? But Qa, Qareen, which is a companion, it means Qareen. Yes? And, and, oh, is there a, is special some quality in the black dog? Or mm. just <laughs> because my name well, is special. My name is not a black dog. <laughs> <laughs> right. Black dogs are shaitan. 
But the black dog, as I said, black, not a single white gray hair in it. Just black. It's a shaitan. So you just make a sti'ada from him. Don't worry, he's not going to harm you. He's like a little dog. The dogs, you see, they're not going to be from the animals in paradise. Paradise have no dogs, so don't worry about barking dogs there. So in paradise, they'll have the animals which Allah made them barakah. You know like what? Sheep. You know the sheep is barakah, you know that. And Abdullah ibn Abbas interprets this barakah, he tells you, look, I'm wondering, look, how many dogs that the dog, when she gives birth, how many puppies? Lots of them, isn't it? Not one. But the sheep delivers what? One, not a twin, just one. But yet the number of the sheep is more than the number of the dogs. Allahu Akbar. That's the barakah. Lots of puppies. And yet as well, how many? Have you ever seen, for example, people make an udhiyah with a dog? <laughs> but udhiyah with what? With sheep. So thousands and millions of sheep have been what? Slaughtered for the udhiyah. Yet the sheep are more. Look at that. A barakah. It's amazing. Have you noticed that? This is a blessing of Allah. They've been slaughtered millions and millions. If you did that to the dogs, the dog will be no dogs whatsoever. But even the dogs, they bring more dogs, but the sheep are more, they are blessed. And that is why you find your sheep, inshallah, in Jannah. Ask which father. What's the best supplication before going to sleep? Uh, best supplication for to sleep. I would say to the person, if he does the following, then he will be okay for him. Number one is Ayat al Kursi. Ayat al Kursi is very important because Ayat al Kursi is the greatest of all ayah in the Quran. And the Shaitan, he is the one who is the enemy who taught it to Abu Hurairah, told him it is the best of God against us, against the Shayateen. So that's number Number two, the Quls. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Qul awadhu rabbil falak. Qul awadhu rabbil nas. Gather your hand, blow into them. And recite the three quls, and then rub from your head there, the face and all the outer portion of the upper portion of your body, up to your feet. And then do it again and three times. And that's a good supplication, inshallah, to protect you for the bed. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Asallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, min sayyamah qalafi tabi'ah sana wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Wa barakallahu fikum.